Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 7th and today we're taking a look at the much talked about atmospheric river developing across the Pacific Ocean. We can see it developing real time here on the water vapor loop, mid-level water vapor loop. You see Washington, Oregon, California, there's British Columbia, Alaska over here and the Hawaiian Islands down here. You can see Wednesday system will be moving through the area but not much of a precipitation maker. Some for the Cascades of British Columbia and Washington but not much for the lowlands as far as Wednesday system and we are going to get a nice day today you guys probably see all the glorious sunshine out there you'll see the high clouds start to move in but enjoy that day today because this atmospheric river is on its way and it extends all the way back to the western pacific nice big plume of subtropical deep moisture headed for the region here and checking out the rest of the country briefly here, there's an enhanced risk for some severe thunderstorms across a tornado alley here tornado risk wind and hail so heads up if you're traveling out there now you can see we've introduced some hydraulic concerns across North Cascades, Okanagan Highlands. That's probably going to get extended around the Pacific Northwest as this event draws closer. There's some red flag warnings down here through the Southwest, some heat advisories and warnings for portions of Texas and New Mexico. And check out the NAM 3 cam temperatures for today. Look at Seattle getting up into the low 70s. Willamette Valley probably low 70s as well. Maybe some 80s. Low 80s in eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, Idaho. Very nice day today. Enjoy this because it's not going to last, folks. Check out the HER, the high-resolution rapid three refresh. You can see some mid-70s possible on the Willamette Valley, according to the HER. Mid-70s possible for Seattle today. We'll see how warm we get before those high clouds start to move in there. And you can see the warmth through eastern Washington, Idaho, and Oregon, and some of the valleys of British Columbia there, too. But checking out the precipitable water here on the GFS, you'll see Wednesday's system weaken as it gets towards the coastline there. And you can see this huge slug of subtropical moisture extend all the way past the dateline, all the way into the Western Pacific headed our way. And there it goes impacting the coastline. And you'll notice this parent low is what steers this atmospheric river here. And if it's more progressive, it will push this atmospheric river south and out of the region quicker. But it looks like it kind of takes a wobble north on these recent runs and allows that second shot of precipitation to get the region here before it finally the trough finally settles southward and weakens that atmospheric river and then on the extended we're probably going to get a trough that's going to continue precipitation chances across much of the pacific northwest the next 10 days are pretty active and wet across the pacific northwest so enjoy the day today here is integrated vapor transport, the GFS. This is what we measure the category of atmospheric rivers by. You can see that Wednesday system weaken as it comes in, but then this huge plume of moisture is on its way. You can see some of these values over a thousand here impact the Washington, Oregon coast up towards uh, Vancouver Island. And you'll see that starts about 9Z on Thursday, really. You can start to get the values over 250. And then you'll go all the way in and we almost get a break through western washington there but not quite the precip's gonna probably continue and you see the oregon coast though does not get any break from this atmospheric river as it extends in over 60 hours of duration so right now the gfs is painted in category four or category five atmospheric river making landfall in the pacific northwest now checking this out this is the european total precipitation there's wednesday system mainly just the high terrain but then look at that atmospheric river. You can't miss it there. It kind of bears down on us and really paints the Cascades, the coastal ranges, all the way through the Queen Charlotte's coastal range of British Columbia. And some of the higher terrain of BC interior and the panhandle of Idaho, northeast Washington, and M Montana get some pretty good precipitation amounts as out of this as well. And this is the 10-day period for the European. And you can see how the precipitation kind of piles on there near the end as the troughing kind of hangs around and keeps precipitation chances around. GFS, let's go out 10 days with this too. Wednesday system, not much. But then you see the atmospheric river pour into the region here and really bring some good amounts all the way down to the southern Oregon Cascades and even all the way down through southeast Oregon there, Idaho, British Columbia interior, still getting their fair share on the GFS here too. You can see over an inch and a half in Seattle. As we go out 10 days, you can see the trophy and hang around and kind of pile on that precipitation as we go on and through the extended too. So it's going to be an active period through the next 10 days here, folks. So stay tuned. This is the scale again I showed yesterday. You can see category four, five, three, two, one. And if we go over 48 hours with those high values on the integrated, the water vapor transport here, that would be considered category five atmospheric river. It's pretty rare at any time of year, but extremely rare during June. 
And again, I showed this yesterday too, this atmospheric river vertical cross section here. You can see most of the atmospheric river lies below four kilometers or generally below 11 or 10,000 feet or so. Just a very low level, warm, moist air mass being pumped into the region, which usually gets wrung out by our, di by our dynamic terrain as these move on shore. And here's looking at 300 millibars this is kind of the parent low that steers this atmospheric river into our region here. And you can see by Friday, just a nice fetch all the way across the Pacific. You'll see this also at 500 millibars too, as we go into Friday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, this big jet stream just racing across Pacific into the Pacific Northwest. And this is 850 millibars. This is right in the heart of the atmospheric river here. As we go through the day Thursday, you can see the ridging down here, spinning this clockwise into our areas. Notice this clockwise rotation here, counterclockwise, cyclonic rotation here. It allows this atmospheric river to just really blast into the region and allows that fetch of subtropical moisture to just race into the Pacific Northwest. Kind of an interesting look at it there, almost like two gears turning one over the Pacific Ocean here and one over the Gulf of Alaska, just churning this moisture into our region. Now taking a look at 500 millibar heights, European, this, let's actually, let's back up so we can go out a little bit further here yesterday afternoon's run. You'll see Wednesday system there. Then you can see the parent low just really going strong, strong ridging across the Western Pacific, and that's what causes this tight gradient and allows the atmospheric river to really be quite significant as it moves into the area here. And then you'll notice the troughing kind of settle over the region, ending the atmospheric river, but keeping us cool and precipitation around. Possible thunderstorms on and through the extended. We'll have to watch that day at a time as we get closer to the event and see how these troughs evolve. This is the GFS, good agreement with Wednesday system, of course. Parent low sets up, atmospheric river gets driven into the Pacific Northwest uh, Thursday into Friday morning, and we're going to get two shots of that probably, it looks like, in the recent model runs. And then the troughing moves across the region, trough sets up off the West Coast. Again, just a very active pattern coming up here for the next 10 days, folks. So checking out the Canadian here too, probably going to be a pretty good model agreement here. As you can see, that Gulf of Alaska troughing, strong ridging, atmospheric river makes its way in. Trough settles over the area in the extended here. This is the Canadian that's just running now. But you get the picture there, folks. This is the European. The blue is the control run. The green is the mean. And you can see the ensemble variation here with the amount of precip we're going to get. But you can see generally by early next week, we're probably going to be up over an inch and a half additional for SeaTac, which will put us well above average for June already. And that would be before we even reach the halfway point of June. And this is for the GFS for Seattle Tacoma. You can see that to the two waves here, Thursday night, and then again during Sunday morning here, bringing almost two inches to the Seattle area on the GFS control run. You see the mean has less, but still an inch and a half, which would put us well over normal, well before halfway through June. This is GFS from McCord Air Force Base, kind of showing the same thing here. One shot and then a second shot Sunday morning. This is the European here for the temperatures, as I always show here. You can see a nice day today. Might even get a little bit above 71 for SeaTac here. And I don't know about the 70 here. I mean, we'll be in the warm sector, but it will be a lot of clouds around. Will we get to 70? It's yet to be seen. But the big story here is looking at the trough as we go through the weekend and on in through next week, well below average temperatures. Remember, we're going to be above 70. We're going to be at 70 for our average temperatures. We're going to be potentially more than 10 degrees below average as we go through next week. So chilly weather will still hang out across the region here. Look at Quilly. Yeah, and you can see why they, they made an entire TV series about vampires across the rainforest out there. I mean, look at this. They're just going to be socked in. They'll be troughing, atmospheric river, and then troughing, chilly temperatures. So you love it if, you, if you're a moss back. That's the place to be. And now this is looking at percentage of average precipitation from April 1st to June 6th. As you know, we've been wet around the region for most parts. But you can see some areas of the eastern slopes of the Cascades of Oregon have remained well below average precipitation, as well as some select areas of eastern Washington. Now looking at back since January, most, a lot of eastern Washington is actually a little bit below average in precipitation since January 1st. You see the Cascades have gotten above average and a little bit below average for portions of western Washington as well. And you can see California really well below average, almost all of California, almost all of Nevada, big portions of southern Oregon as well. 
and much of Idaho and Montana below average precipitation. We go all the way back to October 1st. You can even see how this is highlighted a little more for Southern Oregon. Places in Eastern Washington are quite a bit below average since October 1st, which is the start of the water year. So just a heads up there. We are making up for it, but they've still been below average since October 1st. So yeah, again, I may do a live stream tonight just to check out model runs as they come in here and just kind of watch the evolution of this atmospheric river, you know, get people talking. You guys can ask some questions. I'll try to answer them the best I can and just try to raise awareness on these systems as they move in here. Right now, it doesn't look like a huge flooding event um, because, you know, our mountains are made to handle some pretty big precipitation makers. Even though this is going to be a big one, it might cause some minor flooding, but we'll have to see how this evolves. We'll talk about that a little bit tonight. If you guys want to know more about that, go ahead and ask about that. So yeah, if you guys haven't yet, click like, click subscribe, and I'll probably do a live stream tonight, and I'll see you guys then. If not, I'll see you tomorrow morning.